Welcome to your first Excel challenge. In this video, I'm going to give you four Excel questions from easy to hard to test your Excel skills. You can download the practice file down in the description. That way you can follow along and see how many questions you can get right. Now, before we get into the first question, my advice for you is to try and solve each question yourself first before you watch me do it. As we arrive at each question, you can pause the video and give it your best shot. Then you can watch me do it to see if you did it correctly. Alrighty, let's get to it. For the first question, we must fill out the data for each employee following the example in the first row. Of course, we could always type out all of the information manually, but that would take a really long time. We could also try and come up with some formulas too, but that seems just as tedious. Instead, the easiest thing to do here would be to use flash fill. To do this for the first name, we select the cell right below the first entry, and then we use control E to activate flash fill. This completes all of the first names for us. We can then select the cell below the last name and use control E to activate flash fill again. And then we can do the same thing with the initials and we can do the same thing with the email as well. This works because flash fill is a feature in Excel that allows us to duplicate a pattern for a large set of data. In this case, that pattern was already established for each column, so all we had to do was activate flash fill using control E. And just in case you're curious, you can also activate flash fill by going to home in the ribbon and then fill in flash fill. Okie dokie, let's move on to question two. Here we are asked to ensure that only a date between a specified start and end date May be entered in for each employee. In other words, we want to restrict what can be entered into the green area. To do something like this, we need to use the data validation feature in Excel. Let's start by selecting the cells that we want to restrict, and then we can go to data and then data validation. Now we want to make sure that only a date value can be entered. So under where it says allow, we need to select date. Next, we want to make sure that the enter date falls between the specified start and end dates in our worksheet. So we place our cursor in the start date field, and then we can select the date value in our worksheet. We also need to make sure that this is an absolute reference since we are selecting the data validation for multiple cells. So we can simply press the F4 key on our keyboard to add in the dollar signs and make this an absolute reference. Then for the end date, we place our cursor in the box, and then we can select the end date in our worksheet. We then press the F4 key to make this an absolute reference. At this point, we can click on OK. And now, if we enter a date that falls within the start and end date, we have no problem. But if we enter a date outside of the constraints, we get an error message letting us know that we can't do that. Also, if we enter something that isn't a date, we get another error message. So our data validation is working correctly. Okie dokie, let's move on to question three. Here we are asked to highlight in red all of the starting salaries that surpass the salary limit shown here. The easiest thing to do here would be to use conditional formatting to highlight the values for us. To do that, we start by selecting all of the salary data, and then we go to home and conditional formatting. We know that we want to highlight values that are above a specified value. So we go to highlight cell rules and then greater than. In the box that appears, we need to set the amount and the formatting. Let's start by specifying the amount. So we place our cursor here and then we can select the amount in our worksheet. And again, it's important that we see dollar signs here since we are applying the formatting to several cells. We want this to be an absolute reference, so it is the same for each cell that we are applying the conditional formatting to. Next, we can specify how we want to format the cells that are greater than the amount value. So we can click on the down arrow here and then select red fill. We can then click on OK. And now any salary that is above the salary limit is highlighted in red. 
Let's finish up with our last question for the day. Here, we are asked to calculate the average of all the starting salaries below the salary limit. In other words, calculate the average for only the salary values that are less than the salary limit shown here. To pull off this calculation, we need to use the average if function. This function will calculate the average for only those cells that meet a specified condition, which is exactly what we want to do here. So let's select the cell right here and enter equals and then average if. And for the first argument, we need to select the range of cells that we will test. In this case, we are testing the salaries, so we select the salary range. Now for the second argument, we need to specify the criteria that our selected range must meet. Here, we want to test to see which salary values are less than the salary limit. So we enter in a less than symbol, and then we can select the salary limit. Now the next part is very important. Do you see how the E5 reference does not have a color to it? That's because there is currently a syntax error in our formula. Whenever you use a cell reference with a comparison operator like this within the average if function, you need to put the comparison operator in quotes and connect it to the reference with an ampersand. And when you do, the reference gets its color back like you see here. On to the third argument. Now, if the range of cells that we wanted to average was different from the range of cells that we selected for the first argument, you would need to select that range for the third argument. In this case, it is the same range, so we can simply leave out the third argument in this case. We can then close parentheses and hit enter. And when we do, we get back the average for all of the salaries that are below the salary limit. So how did it go? Did you get all of the questions right? Or were they more challenging than expected? Let me know down in the comments. In either way, I hope you had fun and learned a thing or two as well. Also, if you want to learn more, be sure to check out my Excel Total course at SpreadsheetLife.com. Whether you are a seasoned Excel user or an absolute beginner, this course will not only bring you up to speed, but make you a highly proficient Excel master for life. That being said, be sure to like and subscribe so you can see more videos like this one. And until next time, I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.